Greetings, this is James Gillen with As You Wish Talk Radio, and uh, we've got quite a lineup here. We have uh, a lot of people visiting, some very powerful people, uh, you know, visiting the ranch right now that all just seem to gather here today. And so rather than, uh, you know, miss this opportunity, we thought we'd bring them on, you know, different groups of, of people to talk about different um, organizations and, and work they're doing to turn the planet around and, and bring things forward. But before I do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what's been going on here at the ranch lately. There's probably some people out there listening that uh, are listening for nefarious reasons that are very surprised to hear my voice and that I'm, I'm even coherent at all after some of the things that have transpired. Because uh, about 4.30 in the morning, we had a mysterious black helicopter fly over about probably a week and a half ago which was kind of strange, and, and you, you could feel the shift in the energies and, and things happening here where they're messing with the energies and people. You know, and there's a lot of satellite technology and other psychotronics and things of that nature that are, are trying to interrupt, you know, what's happening here at the East City Stargate. Well, uh, the last uh, Thursday, while I had Dr. Dream on the show, and I was I was doing a pre-record with him approximately, it's probably about one, 10 after 1 in the afternoon, uh, a black helicopter that looks somewhat like an Apache, but it was retrofitted with some really ornate gear on it. And uh, there was some boxes and this mysterious black ball on the right side of the helicopter that nobody knows what it is. Uh, I've talked to Air Force people, and they said that they don't know who these guys are. And the gear, they have no idea what it does, and it's very elaborate gear. Well, this helicopter flew over the ranch you know, during the interview, and uh, what it did is it had the ability to just totally scramble your energies. And, and they, it looks like they tried to shut down the vortex, too. And it took me quite a while to, to adjust after that happened. And, and uh, it was definitely targeted, you know, personally. And uh, when it hit, uh, people that saw me afterwards said, what happened to you? You, just, you don't even look like you anymore. You don't even look like you're here, you know. And I told him, I said, well, I'm just animating this body right now until it's under repair, you know, so it's quite interesting. But uh, anyway, the higher beings came in and, and uh, kind of helped me put everything back together, including my own higher self. And and so I'm back. And uh, and I thought that's quite interesting because after that, I found out by a lot of other people, they're experiencing the same thing. And the people that who are for real and the, who are true light workers and that are really, you know, going to bat for humanity are also being hit with these same energies. So there's a concerted effort right now to take out the real light workers and uh and to uh and actually support the ones that are, you know, planned opposition. You know, they're put there to make it look like they're against the government, but they're there to steer the information, you know, the misinformation, the, the shields and all the other people out there that work for agencies, you know, behind the scenes that we don't even know about, which I'm going to get into. And I think one of the interesting things that might have triggered this is, was because uh, with Anya Briggs, who's a, a brilliant, uh, super, like a super psychic, you know, that was was uh, created for that agenda, has been blowing the whistle on on these, these groups and what they're really doing. And it's a very reptilian... Uh, negative gray agenda that's behind this and it's this transhumanist agenda so whenever you hear about transhumanism and people supporting this and trying to push this uh you know be very aware of this that this is a very negative agenda and it's one you don't want to be involved in and it's really it's it's an agenda to totally dehumanize people and and basically herd the masses and there's a lot of other agendas out there like agenda 21 and things like that so do your research i would strongly advise going to roxy lopez's youtube channel or alfred weber's uh exopolitics channel you know dot com or on youtube as well and uh, check into what they've been talking about as far as the transhumanist agenda and uh, some of the other information that they're bringing out about these events that are transpiring because they're they're really blowing the whistle on this and, and uncovering a lot of people that you actually think are there on your behalf who really aren't and haven't been for some time. So we've been observing this as well, especially with the planned opposition that are in some of the highest places in ufology and, their, and, uh, and certain radio stations and things like that. They're 
And some are, are willing participants in this agenda and some don't even know, you know, they're being mind controlled and they don't even know, which I want to get into because, you know, there's some things that have gone on that people need to know about. You know, they had a, a, a secret meeting, you know, at the Johnsfield Centrifuge. It's a, it's a naval, uh, naval air war center where they had this secret meeting and it's, uh, I think it's Warminster, uh, Pennsylvania and it was in June of 2012. And they invited uh, quite a few people in the UFO community. And you can see the who's who's list. Like I'll let Alfred or Anya give you the list on, on who was there. And, and uh, it was quite an interesting makeup. And I think, I think for, from what I understand is that there was a lot of uh, chest beating there, a lot, of, uh, a lot of ego, a lot of fine wine and fine alcohol and fine food and everything else. And then at night, I guess a lot of strange things happening because – uh, people did not come back the same from that meeting. And to me, it's a no-brainer. If somebody offers you a an invite, you know, to a secret meeting, and, you know, it's sponsored by some very, very extremely wealthy people, and they're doing it at a Naval Air War Center, you know, <laughs> and with some underground facilities there, my first thing would be, ah, no, thank you. I don't think I really need to go there. And so I've had opportunities to go to certain places and give talks and, and do lectures and stay. And, and I've turned them down because I know what's under those facilities. And, uh, and so I've, I've, uh, and I've also had, you know, several attempts such as this last one to, to take us out, to either get us with the program and, you know, corrupt us or, or, uh, take us out. And so the good news is there's a lot of people out there that are not corruptible. Uh, they are very connected to these higher beings. And as we all know, in every prophecy, they say the wicked and the evil will be removed from the earth. Every prophecy talks about this, and we are in those days, the days to come. So they're pulling out all stops, and they're trying to get all their people in place to control the information, to steer it in a direction that they want to steer it. And uh, we need to be very aware of that. And, and we need to be very aware of this transhumanist agenda, which includes chemtrails with nanotechnologies that are turning people into little bio robots. And uh, we need to really do our research and look into all this stuff. And there are whistleblowers that are coming out and talking about this. But some are just giving you a little bit of information, and then they're going to steer it, you in a direction they want you to go in. So you need to be very careful about this. So whenever you see a lot of ego involved, in, in some of these presenters, or if you see, you know, they talk about a transhumanist agenda, they talk about, you know, global warming, which is a farce. There is climate change. There isn't global warming. Uh, there's a lot of other things going on. This is a huge event. It's not carbon or CO2, uh, you know, carbon dioxide or even CO2 doing this. You know, this isn't what's what's happening here. It's, some, it's a much bigger event that's happening. It has everything to do with an alignment with galactic plane, moving into a highly energized place in space. The whole universe is moving through through certain areas in space, especially this solar system. And there's another incoming solar system as well. So there's a lot more going on than you're being told. And uh, it's all being steered. And we need to, you know, really pay attention to this. So anyway, uh, you know, to me it's a no-brainer when naval intelligence gives you an offer, you know, to come and hang out with them. Uh, you might want to think twice. And... Uh, and I'm not going to mention names. I'll let Alfred, you know, Weber do that and Anya do that. And that's not my job. You know, the, those who went to this meeting really need to take stock in themselves and what happened and any changes that may have happened with them and, and really get some help and, and get rid of any implants or any, uh, uh, manipulations that went on and, and, uh, step up to the plate and just say, wait a second, and maybe come out and talk about it. You know, be a whistleblower about what, what happened because many don't even know what happened to them. It was all done at night. It, it was done, you know, after, you know, a few glasses of wine or whatever drinks they were doing and, and whatever else was, might have been in the food of the drinks. Who knows? But a lot of them aren't even aware of what happened at some of these meetings. So we need to do due di diligence whenever we're listening to somebody and watch out for the agendas. So uh, the agendas that they'll be pushing is, you know, the transhumanist agenda. You know, be very aware of that. Uh, global population reduction, they'll be, you know, pushing that one. Uh, they'll be trying to steer everything into their camp 
and create one messiah you know look everybody look at this guy this is the guy and then they'll probably take that guy down just to just to uh disempower everybody and get everybody to to stop even looking into the ufo agenda and uh and they're going to try to steer it into a very negative agenda you know like create the war in space you know like now they've got the meteors, you know, we've got to gear up for the meteors and we've got to do this and that. And the next one will be the war with the ETs. They're running out of fictitious enemies. And uh, and so they're, the next one is, as uh, Carol Rosen has talked to us about, uh, you know, through through a lot of her connections on the inside, that their next program is the, the war with the ETs. You know, we've got to have an enemy to keep the war machine going and to keep people in fear. And you should be very scared, you know, just like the latest terror event, you know. <laughs> you know, I was looking up Al-Qaeda, and it actually means toilet, you know. <laughs> it's, a, I mean, what self-respecting group would name themselves the toilet? You know, come on, you know, or the toilet seat. There's different names for it. So, so anyway, uh, you know, this, you know, we need to really look at this. You know, why are we funding Al-Qaeda right now? Why are we t- dumping tons of money and arming these people? You know, what's Benghazi about? We need to really look into all these things and see what's really going on because, you know, it's all about keeping things stirred up and keeping the chaos going. And and we need to realize that there's some events happening that people need to understand. The big question that keeps being asked is why would these people spray their own families, their own people with these toxic chemicals, you know? Why would they keep these wars going if their families are the ones being killed in these wars? They, they, you know, you need to to really look at why. And you have to realize that some of these people, as you move up the ladder, I call it the Archon Network, are very, very evil people. And they aren't there anymore. They're being governed by another force. And they've sold their souls to a very dark force. And that's this reptilian dark gray agenda. And uh, and that's who's operating them. So that is why they can actually give the orders to poison their own families and poison their own friends and be okay with it and continue in these operations. You know, the good news is there's a soul activation going on, and a lot of people are waking up and realizing what's happening, and they're saying, wait a second, I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, There's whistleblowers coming forward in every agenda, blowing the whistle on what's really going down, and so it's up to the American people to wake up and, and the global population to wake up and just see who is really behind this mess. And again, who is really behind this mess is an unseen force that does not care anything for humanity and the earth. As a matter of fact, they hate humanity and the earth. And do your research into the ancient times. You know, there were peaceful people living on the earth that were evolving naturally, and they were interfered with on many occasions. There's been many, many star nations that have come and gone from the earth. Some were very peaceful, some were very advanced, and some were very tyrannical. And we need to look at that and see if the tyrants are still here and look at their organizations, and look at their deeds, and you'll know who they are by their deeds. You know, all you have to do is look at the banksters and the Illuminati and whoever they're praying to and doing their secret rituals to, to know what's going on on the planet. Because why are there so many wars? Why is the air toxic? Why is the water toxic? Why is all this fracking going on? You know, why the chemtrails? Why all the food attitudes? What about Monsatan, you know, and all of its frankenfish and modified foods, you know, all these other things? You know, how can this happen if you do really have a government that loves you and cares about you and wants and is very concerned about your well-being on the highest levels? And so now it's going to take a little brutal honesty to wake up and smell the coffee and just see if you're being a willing participant in any of this and step away from it and let it fall. It is going to fall. All of this is going to fall. It's in all the prophecies that it's going to fall. There are some amazing beings coming into play right now, some higher beings that these dark lords do not want you to know about and do not want you to align with. And they're here for the awakening and healing of humanity and the earth, and they're, they, they're far more powerful than these other beings that have been running amok down here for quite some time. So anyway, that's uh, we're in the next couple of years, especially now in 2016, and I think in the next you know few weeks we're going to see a lot of this, a lot of these organizations going down and being exposed for what they are and who they are and what their agendas are, 
and the people are going to be rising up and becoming empowered and waking up because there's just a huge influx of energy coming in on the planet right now, and it's unstoppable. You know, it doesn't matter if they take out me or anybody else. It doesn't matter because this energy is so big, it's so powerful, it can't be stopped. You know, and if those who want to keep playing these games, good luck with that. You're just creating more karma, which is going to be amplified and accelerated. It's all going to come back on you. And, you know, there is universal law pressing hard on the earth. And those who do act in these aggressive warlike ways and try to control and dominate will be taken out at their own hand. Their own karma is going to be bent back in on them. They're going to implode. And so there's no way out for them other than to shift and align with this process and start shifting their energies towards the awakening healing process and get behind that. You know, that's their only way out. But, you know, some are so arrogant, they realize that they think they're separate from from universal law. They think they're separate from karma and they think, you know, there's nothing above them or, or nobody taking notes on high, but believe me, they are, you know, they are taking notes and enough's enough and they're getting ready to come forward now. So you're going to see a lot of changes in this, you know, when this happens. So some of these attacks and this nonsense that they're pulling is just a last ditch effort to maintain control, which they're losing rapidly. And a lot of that's up to us, you know, on how rapid this happens and how soon the changes can come. One of the things I wanted to talk about, too, is that, you know, the prophecies, especially the Lakota prophecies, talk about the beast. And the beast is 2,000 miles wide. And this beast is just all-consuming. It wants to dominate and control everyone and everything. And just when you think there's no hope left, the beast consumes itself. And then you have the 2,000 years of peace, the star nations return, and everything is healed, and the planet is put back on track. And along with us, you know, people on the planet here that, that are the awakened ones and who have aligned with the love and the joy and the bliss and the creator within all creation. Those people are the ones remaining and they're going to continue with the earth and the earth will not allow anybody that's not frequency specific to, to be here anymore. So this huge pressing energy is coming in. It's coming in above and below. The earth itself is, is expanding, moving up in her frequencies and there's this is all orchestrated too by some higher beings that are assisting in that process, the higher dimensions. And so these uh you know, troublemakers that are here now that have been wreaking havoc on the earth for quite some time are not having a real good go of it right now. And and their their future is is already set. You know, they've already set it for themselves. So anyway, uh that's the good news. Hang in there and and know that uh you know, know that the end is going to be marvelous. It's going to be amazing, but there's going to be some chaos in between. And uh, we're in the midst of that chaos and things are going to be moving very rapidly. So on that note, I just want to give people a heads up on what's going on and say a lot of prayers for the light workers out there, the people that are for real. And uh, do some research on, on who really is not for real and who might have been taken over and who's being manipulated through their own ego desires or... Uh, or whatever, and uh, and we need to start holding these people to impeccable integrity, you know, as we move forward, and uh, and it's not easy. I mean, look at their affiliations, look at their past. You know, I've seen people of the highest orders, you know, in the UFO community that are directly involved with military intelligence, and they're directly involved with with the other alphabet agencies, and they've been installed. And so we need to take a long, hard look at this and just and question this and say, wait a second. And, you know, and they will give some information out. It will sound like they're doing a great job on, on moving people uh, forward and reclaiming their sovereignty and their power and their divine rights. But, you know, we need to look at are they doing this with impeccable integrity? You know, how far will they go with this? Are they censoring people that are of impeccable integrity? You know, we really need to hold them, their feet to the fire on this and say, hey, come on, let's, let's step up to the plate and bring the real light warriors on and the real light workers on and start looking at the people that have sold out and, you know, and the people that have had an extreme lapse of integrity or the people that have been taken over, you know, by mind control or whatever various means and, and hold their feet to the fire and say, hey, you know, you need some help. <laughs> you need to, you need to clear this up, you know, and get back on track. 
So, you know, I'm not about making division and, you know, I'm not about, uh, uh, you know, pointing fingers and I don't want to give the big list of the people who were at this secret meeting. You know, some of them were friends of mine. I'm hoping that some of these people were, were not involved or taken or taken down, you know, into the lower levels of these places and mind controlled or manipulated or implanted or anything else. I'm really praying that that didn't happen. And, uh, <clears throat> to some of these people and, uh, and so we'll see. But I know some of the people involved in there, their their spouses and other people around them are saying they don't really recognize them anymore and they've changed drastically. So anyway, uh, it's important that we send prayers to these people, that we call on the higher beings to help heal these people. And we help, you know, try to get these people back on track again and kind of undo what's been done, you know. And, and, uh, and again, it's up to the free will of these people to make their changes. Some won't. Some some are just benefiting too well from keeping this disinformation game going or, or controlling the information. They're 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 in too high of a position and they're benefiting too well for it, and they won't change. But eventually, they will have to face you know their deeds, and that's just the law of nature. You know that's universal law, and it has nothing to do with me or you or anybody else. It's just the way it is. So anyway, with that. Uh, with that crossed over, I mean, there's a lot of information and, and really make this interview available to other people and say some major prayers for the light workers, the real light workers out there. And you know a lot of them and say some prayers for them as well because they're under the gun, just as, as some of the other people who have sold out and are all meeting and beating their chests and talking about how wonderful and powerful they are and everything else. Um, there's other people out there that are very benevolent and they're very uh, humble and they're doing some great works out there and they're under attack, under you know attack on the other side because they're trying to eliminate those people, and so we need to really call in some protection on the higher levels to bring in as many beings as we can for protection and put an end to this, uh, because we do have to initiate this. It's not a huge babysitting job where they're going to come in and do everything for us. We have to rise the occasion. We have to stand tall. We need to start calling, you know, things as they are and, uh, and step up to the plate. And when we do that, they'll be right behind us helping us. So we have to do our part as well. You know, saying God helps those who help themselves. So anyway, with that being said, um, you know, that's a little bit on a darker note, but uh, it's information that needs to get out. And, uh, you know, we need to support all the people, especially the people blowing the whistle on the chemtrails and the Franken foods, you know, and the GMO nonsense that's going on and all the food additives and, and the water, the fluoride in the water and the, and the, uh, mercury in the fillings and all that stuff. The things that are detrimental, you know, the fracking, we need to really get behind these people, all the people involved in bringing this to the light and putting it into this this war against humanity and nature that's ongoing right now. And uh, with that being said, I want to get back to a lighter note. And we've got several people that uh, we've got here at the ranch that I want to bring on on the air and introduce themselves and, and talk a little bit about themselves and what they're doing here. And and uh, hopefully we can open up the, the landline. Uh, we've got them waiting in the uh, meditation room. So... Uh, uh, welcome to the show. I know we've got the line open. Um, can you uh, tell us who you are and uh, who you're with? Yeah, can you hear me? I can. Okay, my name is Chris, and uh, I came out to visit the, the ranch, and uh, uh, I'm actually from New Hampshire, and I'm right now I'm working with a group, uh, actually it's the, sort of the remains of uh, the peer group from John Mack. Um, we call it the John Mack uh, Institute, Jemmy. Uh -huh. um, we don't have a lot going on right now, but uh, in the past, we've uh, you know our intent is to to bring people out of the fear of expressing their experiences. You know, this is one of the most insidious problems we have: is that the the powers that be uh, ridicule any experience you have that doesn't fit their agenda, right? Oh, yeah. So we thought you know the best thing is to try and uh, our intent is to try and bring people out of that fear, uh, make it, uh, provide a forum so that they can uh, express this and, and talk about it. Because really, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be talking about experiences as whether or not they're real, but what actually is happening. How can we understand an experience in light of science, in light of how we understand the universe, etc.? 
And uh, we, we've had several, uh, three actually, open, sort of open house meetings in the Cambridge, Massachusetts area where we uh, invite people to come and express, express our experiences. And it's amazing. Some people come, they're, you know, like 70s and 80s, and, and they're, they've held in experiences they've had for when they were kids. And, and all this time they were afraid to talk about. So, uh, you know, removing this fear is really important for us. Um, unfortunately, our, our biggest drawback now is lack of time and money. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and the main uh, head of the uh, John Mack Institute, Danny Mack, is, uh, has left the area and moved to Colorado. So we're sort of uh, a little bit disjointed at the moment. But we're doing uh, various things. Several of us are working on alternate energy, free energy. Um, several are, are, are writing books on their experiences. Um, I'm involved with... Uh, uh, other research um, uh, with something a term called microvita, which is a, a new term, which uh, <laughs> would be a long time to talk about that. And, and yeah. uh, the other one, uh, another one, is working with Nassim Harman, and uh, so we're kind of we're still together, but uh, a little bit uh, moved around right now. But, yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, we still have good intentions and. Yeah. I got a story. I got a story about John. It's really a lot of people don't know it. And uh, what happened was, I'd had several conversations with with John, and I did meet him at some events that we were both speaking at, uh, some of the major uh-huh. conferences. But not, you know, didn't spend a lot of time with him. But you know, I talked to him on the phone right before his his unfortunate, you know, quote accident. Yeah, accident. And uh, he was coming out to the ranch, and he was going to come Ooh. out. to and he said, I really want to see what's going on there. And I told him, I would be honored if you came here and got to see what's happening and, you know, looked at some of the footage and interviewed some of the people, you know, that have had experiences. And uh, and it was kind of set into motion that it was going to happen as soon as he got back from uh, from England. I believe it was England where he was. And, yeah, uh, London. Yeah. And uh, so, you know. It's very sad that that uh, he had that unfortunate accident that became his demise. But I was looking so forward to that, and I felt it would also really launch ESETI and bridge the gap, you know, between, you know, because I really get behind scientists and psychologists and psychiatrists. We have all co- people from every walk of life right. coming up here, and I, I thought it'd be a great asset for us to work together. And and it's very sad that uh, it didn't happen because of that accident. Yeah, well, it was incredibly unfortunate. I mean, he was such a dynamic person, and uh, and uh, and, he, and he was bringing uh, a lot more of the spiritual into the uh, to the UFO experience, and more so than say uh, Bud Hopkins, etc. And yeah. and, uh, and he was open to more than just uh, ET experience. He was open to experience with beings from subtler realms, etc., which is all all real, just as real as the ET experience, and. Uh, we have to consider all these experiences and uh, mm. and not shut any of it out because uh, the ultimate reality is that all these planes of existence are real and the interactions are happening all the time and we have to allow for this and discuss it and try and understand it, not shut it out and block it out, such as so. And he was really into that, so it's yeah, too bad. He had such a forceful position at Harvard that uh, allowed him to to uh, gain access to the public, and uh, now that's gone, so it's really too bad. But Well, I, that's exactly why I wanted to meet with him, because of what we're happening here with this multidimensional experience. And uh, what's funny is that what we're, what's happening here is, is recorded throughout history, and some of the beings that we've been engaging and interacting with here, uh, we didn't even know who these beings were. We connected with them first. You know, had an interaction, a telepathic connection or spiritual connection. You know, and they have their technologies as well, which are extremely advanced. And mm-hmm. then we find out there's a long historical account of these same type of beings. You know, S- some of yeah. the beings, you know, with, you know, such as the feline beings, you know, have a long historical record throughout India and, and Egypt and things uh-huh. of, that, of that nature. So it's it's quite interesting how... We're having the experiences first here and documenting it, and then we find that it's already been documented in ancient history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, all of us uh, in the Institute have had experiences, and they're all varied, you know. It's like no one has had exactly the same experience. So it's, uh, yeah. uh, one, of the, uh, one of the difficulties of the UFO um, researchers is they try to uh, simplify everything, and I think actually the truth is that this whole experience is far more complicated than, than anybody realizes. Uh, there's so many races of beings visiting, and so many... Uh, I mean, they're from interdimensional, or from from uh, other planes, or from uh, you know, just just anything you can imagine is happening, and uh, we have to be very careful not to simplify this and to, like you say, try and communicate with them. And mm-hmm. I think one of the biggest challenges we have is is to put our put our minds in a place where we can communicate with them. I think they're they're all there waiting for us, and we just don't have the capability to to talk to them very well. And we have to develop that capability. Um, yeah, we have to rise to the occasion. Exactly. You know, luckily for me, I had a drowning experience that just blew me wide open. And I went back to what I call the source itself or the plane of bliss. Uh-huh. And then all the other dimensions opened up to me. And so it was quite a wild ride after that. And and I was meeting all these different beings coming in on all these different dimensions. And some of them weren't so nice and most of them were benevolent and nice and interesting but uh-huh. uh, there were some that weren't so nice that I had to learn how to clear my space and clear these yeah. beings out of the space and, and that's what we teach here how to clear out the ones that aren't so nice so you can work the, with the ones that are very benevolent and spiritually and technologically advanced right yeah I sort of uh, I mean, do meditation I have my own spiritual teacher and I uh, I sort of <laughs> say you know sort of say well uh talk to my guru and say, well, I'll, you know, I'll communicate with beings, but uh, please filter out those who, who, who aren't in the spiritual path. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it works pretty well that way, you know. If, yeah. As long as your mind is aligned in the spiritual direction, you tend to meet with those beings who also are in the spiritual direction. So, Yeah, um, the, mind, the mind in which you seek is the mind in which you connect. And so... Right. Exactly. Yeah, if, if you are, if you have an open mind and loving heart and pure intent, you know those are the beings you're most likely going to connect to. And absolutely, you know, yeah. If you have a lot of fear and victim patterns, or you want to control and manipulate, those are the type of beings you'll draw to you. And yeah, but the, you know, I've had some experiences where a group of beings who are so powerful that uh, it's almost like they can't tone their power down. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. And, it, and and you can mistake. Uh, psychic power for evil when it's not really, and so, um, yeah. and, and I know these beings are very, very good, very spiritual, but they're just so powerful. And I think one thing we aren't used to on this planet is is that psychic power of a very evolved being, and uh, we have to learn to to uh, bring our minds into that power and understand it, not be afraid of it. And uh, uh, but but like you say, it's, it's what they do and uh, how they act that we have to find out their intent rather than just yeah. our itself. Exactly. Uh, you know, if you stand in the presence of an extremely highly evolved being, they're going to be in an emanating a field of energy. And right. that energy is going to bring up all your fears and wounds and traumas exactly. and, <laughs> and everything you're, else. And so we need to really clear our closet out before we do step into the presence of some of these beings or we just won't be able to handle the frequencies. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, the first, you know, uh, you know what is it called? Uh, fight or flight <laughs> fear yes, comes up yeah. immediately when you encounter this, this strength. And, and we have to stop that and, say, and, and learn to uh, first open our heart first and uh, and then, and then we can deal and uh, communicate with them. But exactly. Um, do you have a, a, a website or, or a way that people could connect with you that are interested in, in uh, furthering your mission there? Yeah. Well, uh, we, <laughs> we we keep trying to uh, start one. We haven't been successful in finishing it. Uh, we have one partly started. Uh, when I get back, I'll, I'll bring up the subject with them, and we'll we'll see if we can't start one. But right now, we don't have a website. Um, on my work with uh, Mike Avita, I I'm going to be uh, coming up with a website and that. But what I'll do is I'll email you when I come up with these, these websites, and, and then you can maybe uh, let people know about it. Yeah, we'll send them out over our list. You know, we're, that's right, what we're right. for to support anybody that's that's moving in the same direction or yeah. or in service to humanity and the earth. Hey, well, exactly. thanks for coming on the show. Do we have sure. another guest there that uh, might want to pop in? Hey, James, it's Nate here. Hey. Hey, um, 
So I just wanted to give a quick little setup for the next guest that we have. Um, we got a friend named Trent Goodbody, um, and he's been looking into some really interesting technology. Um, one of the pieces that I think that kind of the disclosure movement in general is kind of missing is some of this freedom technology and the understanding of what is going on uh, with contract and trust law. And Trent is, uh, is somebody who's been inspired by our buddy Dean Clifford, who we did some work with a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, folks may be familiar with his work or maybe some of the interviews that um, James had done, done with him. Um, and we, since our friend Spencer was out here this weekend, you know, we, we invited Trent to come out and we just wanted to kind of trade some notes and we were wrapping shop out there underneath the tree earlier today. And so anyway, without further ado, I'm going to pass him along to you to talk about maybe some of the interesting freedom technology, uh, that he's been working on. Great. Hi there. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. I am doing great. And, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to you know, share some information. Mm -hmm. um, what's, so, the, um, what's the latest uh, cutting edge stuff you're coming across of to, you know, pe get people, help people regain their power? Well, actually, my last week, my sister was being harassed by a couple of Hillsborough police officers. So I rode my bike over there and uh, uh, basically threatened them with a the lawsuit and made them leave. And I filmed the whole thing. It's on YouTube. It's got about... 13,000 views in this last week. So okay. that's really helped uh, promote uh, just awareness that, you know, we aren't powerless. We okay. do have power. As a matter of fact, we are the ones with all the power. All we have to do is reclaim it. Now, how can people see that? Well, there are little clues. For example, um, no, I mean your YouTube channel, if they want to check out that. How, what oh, would they, my I, YouTube channel is called Freedom From Government. Uh, okay. That's the username. Uh, yeah, and it's, uh, the, it's the third video. I also filmed a follow-up video of my sister in front of my house, and she was unaware that the police were behind her, but they just left and mm -hmm. asked her, hey, would you freak out if I told you the police were just behind you? And she said, yes. <laughs> well, they were. <laughs> But uh, they just kept going. So, you know, we don't need to be scared. And that is how, actually, how we're controlled is through our fear. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's plenty of videos on my channel, though. Um, I have videos from me going through a booking process in jail, uh, being arrested for having, for not presenting ID to an officer, and uh, the whole court process, the arraignment. Uh, and they couldn't even get a complete arraignment, which is funny because that case is on appeal right now. It's scheduled to be heard this month. And uh, I do have an attorney. I want to say right now that I don't really advocate hiring an attorney, and I explain the details why in my book. But basically, uh, you want me to explain real quick why <laughs> you don't want an attorney? <laughs> yeah, de well, I know. Yeah, go ahead. I'll let you explain it. Well, there's this book called the Corpus Juris Secundrum, and it is basically the law book for attorneys. That's they're, they're forced to, to to reference it in school, so they know what it is. And if they deny knowledge of what the Corpus Juris Secundrum is, they're lying to you. But anyway, uh, in this book, it says that the the attorney's first duty is not to the client, but to the court. And as a matter of fact, they've sworn an oath as an officer to the court. So their first duty is not to you, it is to the court. And also, um, the, uh, they also define the, who is needed for the services of an attorney, and it says that only people of unsound mind or infants uh, are supposed to utilize the services of an attorney. So if you feel like, uh, well, I know that most people are not competent in law, and as a matter of fact, people go to school for many years to learn about law, and with my approach, you don't have to learn any law. As a matter of fact, my law, I have one of them. <laughs> it's very basic. It is do no harm. 
So if you're doing no harm to anyone, there is no reason why you should be interrupted in your traveling. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, the Supreme Court has ruled that uh, traveling is a right, a constitutional right. And not that the Constitution applies to you. And the Supreme Court has also ruled that the Constitution does not apply to you. But it does apply to every single agent of government that has sworn an oath to uphold it. So mm -hmm. it is applicable to them. It is how we hold them responsible. You can't. Uh, and that's why, you know, someone would sound like they're a little off the rocker if they went into court claiming constitutional rights, because we don't have them. Yeah. And we, personally, I don't want them. <laughs> I have much more freedom without them. So... Um, and, and as a matter of fact, I don't even have rights. What, I, what, I, what m most people think of as rights, I describe as a duty, a duty to be honorable. And with my duty to be honorable, I will do the right thing, regardless of what anybody else says, because I know it to be true. Mm -hmm. And uh, that includes uh, signatures and oaths. I don't sign anything unless it is voluntary. Same with an oath. And you don't have to either. You don't have to sign anything without making a conscious choice in the matter. Same with an oath. Like, uh, I'm sure maybe, maybe, maybe many people are aware that when you, when you sign up with the, uh, you know, when you sign your recruiting card, or your draft card or whatever, that isn't what makes you have to join the Army. It is the act of swearing an oath when you are uh, when you go through that ceremony, and that is voluntary. If you get drafted, you don't have to join the military because you don't have to swear that oath. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's um, interesting. I know the uh, the constitutional yeah, a lot of stuff right there, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting that a lot of people are waking up to this, and I know there's so yeah. many different avenues on dealing with this where we have to, you know, realize, you know, you put a sign on your car, not for hire, you know, and just say, yeah. this this vehicle's not for hire, why are you stopping me? You know, it's like... Uh, exactly, you know. I'm acting in a private capacity, not a commercial capacity. Exactly, and yeah. uh, there's so many different things to do, but, you know... You, you really need to do your homework before you go and try some of these things. You know, the little yeah. warning is, you know, folks, don't try this at home. We're trained professionals, you know, or, <laughs> or whatever, yeah. because uh, it's, it is important that people do some, you know, watch your videos and do the research and, and get really clear about about well, holding the thing these is, is that I have done a lot of, of work. I've, done, I've got a lot of experience, and you don't have to – have the same experience that I do, you can relive it through watching the videos that I've made and um, by visiting my website. There's an incredible amount of information on my website, including hundreds of maximums of law and commerce and uh, uh, all kinds of information, documents, uh, like uh, motions, affidavits, mm -hmm. uh, just lots and lots of stuff. And I've been working on that for uh, quite a while, and I, I'm putting it out there as a resource to people to turn to when they have these problems. Now, what's, what is your website? It is freedomfromgovernment.us. Oh, could you say the first part again? You broke up a little bit. Sure. Freedomfromgovernment.us. Great. And that's, that's the that? website if people want to get a hold of you or, or get – get in touch with some of the experiences you've had as well as the documentation that they could use in their own experience. Definitely, and I write articles all the time on there. As a matter of fact, that video that I was talking about earlier where I went and rescued my sister, I actually wrote a commendation letter to the chief of police for Hillsborough, thanking him <laughs> for his agents acting honorably by retreating. So that's a, that, And that is a very, very good read, actually, it, because it also includes notice to the chief uh, while I'm at it, telling him that me and my friends are going to be traveling lawfully uh, using public uh, roads, using uh, our own tags, and they are to not violate our, our rights when we are traveling either, according to uh, United States Code, Title 18, Section 241. So, and yeah, that's their law. 
Yeah. Just I'm, like, I'm not claiming it, but I'm going to use it against them if they violate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good. It's you know, I always try not to go out and look for trouble, but it's good oh, to be prepared no. when it finds you. You know. As a matter of fact, I even paid the toll today. You know, I could have pulled out the camera and said, "I'm not going to pay your toll, you tyrants." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I paid yeah. it because, uh, there, like you said, there's no need to stir up trouble where it's, where you know they weren't they weren't really causing a conflict that wasn't resolvable rather easily. So why yeah. is there, you know, there's there's no need for me to yeah, cause your... problems where they're, not be, where they're not necessary. But I do, I am a, uh, you know, like a rattlesnake in the corner when you when you come after me trying to violate my rights without, without a victim or cause. Mm-hmm. So one other thing I want to get in real quick is that we always consent. People say, well, if you don't like the system, you can vote to change it and get a new person in politics or whatever. <laughs> I like first thing I want to say about that is how well has that worked so far? Obviously not very well. But the second thing I wanted to say about that is that um, you're consenting. When you vote, you consent to the whole system that is oppressing you. And, and as a matter of fact, every instance that you have contact with law enforcement, you have to provide consent every yep. time. And and think of it this way. If you're driving down the street, and I use the term driving, and I know what it means, but if you're driving down the street with a state license plate on your car, the it's like an advertisement. The, uh, the officer is thinking, well, here we go. We have a commercial entity driving for hire on the roads. Mm -hmm. And then he pulls you over and he gets up to your window and he asks you for a driver's license and a, excuse me, just a second, and a registration. And, uh, of course, an insurance probably. And you hand it all over to him, just verifying that you're that commercial entity he was, you know, looking for. And then you open yourself up to contract. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, you definitely don't want to be contracting with these people because they are pros. Yeah. Okay, so what you want to do is shut them down immediately. And uh, by doing that, you have to remove the presumptions that you instigated in the first place by having the advertisement that you're operating in commercial capacity on the back of your car. You have to remove the the presumption that you are operating in a commercial capacity by presenting your state-issued ID. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and this is so, it's so counterintuitive. People out there are like, are you kidding? Do you want me to drive around with no plates on my car? And I will say, no, I want you to travel. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, the plates are an advertisement for a commercial entity. You are, are performing in commerce unless you remove that presumption. Mm-hmm. So my, my website's full of ways to remove that presumption and full of other information that is helpful just in a general sense regarding government. Yeah. So now are, are they recognizing this? Let's say if you get pulled over. I know Spencer does that a lot and other people, you know, you get well, pulled over with no tags or, or some people are just you making their own. Funny. Uh, nobody's been pulled over. Uh-huh. Nobody's gone to jail. Yeah. Nobody has been stopped. And uh, I believe it's because we are removing the presumption right away. Yeah. We don't have the state plates on there. It mm-hmm. says private property, not for hire, for non-commercial use only. Those are very specific words that have a very specific purpose. Mm-hmm. And uh, a, a police officer has two hats, more or less. He is a peace officer or he can act as a peace officer, or he can act as a corporate policy enforcer, otherwise known as a police officer. Yeah. So, and, and when he's acting as a corporate police officer, he can, uh, he can contract with other entities within the corporation. But if he's acting as a peace officer, there needs to be a victim for there to be a crime. Mm-hmm. So by not acting in a commercial capacity, you're forcing the officer to act as a peace officer, and uh, not he's, he's unable at that point to enforce statutory law. 
So yeah, there's definitely like any any time they they try to take you to court or whatever else, you know, they have to meet the requirements, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and I've and, heard the DA or the prosecutor use, oh well, he had state plates on his car, <laughs> so yeah. you know, if if and and you can you can make your own little sign or whatever, just you know, say private property not for hire for non commercial use only. Mm-hmm. Simple, like I don't know, ten words maybe something. Yeah, but, uh, I know Divine, Divine Province is doing something similar to that, and they've created like a their own uh, embassy, you might say, a country within yeah. a country, and they're going to be issuing plates. Well, out. you know what? They're not the only ones. We are not the only ones doing that because there are other groups that have been doing this for quite some time. There's a church uh, called the Embassy of Heaven, and they they believe in non non incorporated churches. They have they. They make passports for their members. They make driver's licenses. They make plates, uh, wow. car titles. So people have been doing it. And, yeah, these guys did get raided in the 90s, <laughs> but yeah, uh, sure. they are yeah. still doing it. That didn't stop them. And uh, now they travel with their own plates, and they don't really get messed with unless they're causing you know problems, yeah. if they're you know driving recklessly or yeah. running stop signs or whatever. They usually don't don't even get messed with. And I also wanted to mention that just because no one's been pulled over with these plates yet doesn't mean it can't happen. So you, if you're going to do this, if you're going to start traveling lawfully, you really have to have the background. You have to know what you're talking about. You have to know because you're dealing with professionals, people that do this day in, day out, yeah. every day. And it is possible. I want, I want people to know it is possible to deal with them, but you have to do it not from a place of anger and not and you have to you just have to simply have to have knowledge yeah or else no, it, no, it won't, it won't no fly fear, you, just, you will just, be tested you will yeah. be tested so definitely well that's great um yeah we're coming up to the end of the hour here um i can't think enough so why don't you give your website again and uh um and i well, guess i the- have three websites actually the one that we've been talking about is freedomfromgovernment.us, and then mm-hmm. I have another one called trendslist.org, and that's where I post news articles and stuff about false flags and, uh, you know, uh, health issues and other just uh, current events. And then I have all my merchandise on shop.trentgoodbody.com. So, those hey, are well, the, thanks the, for the heads up, and thanks the, for coming on yeah. the show, and keep up the great work. No problem. It's it's my duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there another another uh, guest there hanging on behind you? Uh, nope, I don't see one. Okay, I guess you're it. We're at the end of the hour anyway, so we'll, we've got to be signing off. But, but again, you know, keep up the great work there, and uh, and uh, kudos to you. And uh, hopefully, everybody will check out your websites and support your work and and uh, do their duty as well. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, and it really. It's it's a labor of love, and I just I can't express enough how much people need to just learn who they are. So, mm-hmm. yeah, love your freedom and and stand up for it. Yeah. All righty, I guess we're signing off here. So uh, we just got uh, look like three minutes left. I wanted to open it up for callers, but um, uh, boy, we've got. Just a couple minutes left. Let's see if we can bring on James from Kentucky just for uh, uh, bringing one caller before we end this. So, James, are you with us? Hi, actually, this is Richard from Kentucky, but how are you doing oh. today? Okay, it says James on my on my reader here, but no problem. Well, welcome to the show. We uh, just got a minute left. Uh, did you want to share something with us? Well, then I'll be quick. I just actually left one of your conferences, had a great time. I uh, brought back a couple of your books, and I've got a buddy here that's got a question for you. Sure. Well, I don't know how quick I can make it in less than 30 seconds, but, okay. you know, after your MBE uh, in my family lineage, I studied Damien Brinkley. Have you ever heard of him? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Now, uh, and, I, and I'm with you on the, I kind of, you know, tired of hearing the accepting Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I believe it's. Mm-hmm. It's everybody that certain way, and, and the church doesn't teach us those deep meditations, tools, and techniques. Yeah. What do you recommend is the best way to start that? 
Well, you know, in the book, uh, Reunion with Source, there's a lot of information in there about that. And I always tell people before you even start meditating, learn how to heal unseen negative influences and uh, and uh, get in touch with your own main teacher and guide. And, and if you want to bring Jesus or Mary or Buddha or whoever you want to bring in that are known masters, you can bring them in as well. But uh, before even meditating, I would do that. And then it also gives some deep meditation techniques and what i find the easiest way is to get out in nature if you can and meditate and just basically sit down and be quiet and just follow your breath and as you're breathing and focus on love and joy and bliss and just allow yourself to go higher and higher and and don't try to stop the mind you never will it's just going to run and run and run so you just want to take it higher every time and just bring yourself back to the breath and and focusing on your heart and that love and joy and bliss and then if you don't like what you're feeling if you feel those unseen negative influences or other energy around just keep doing clearings because that'll ensure you have sacred space to to do your meditations thanks james and i'm sure after i get further through your book i'll probably call in and discuss more with you when we have some more time all right sounds great all right you have a good night all right Hey, well, thanks for calling, and uh, we've got a sign-off. Unfortunately, we're hitting the end of the hour. But uh, anyway, this is James Gillen with As You Wish Talk Radio signing off. Have a great day. And, and again, say some prayers out there for all the light workers and the, the people of high integrity and the people that are really doing the light work out there and bringing out the truth So, because we need it right now. And, and also invoke as much divine intervention as you can. Because, you know, there is a bit of a war going on, and, and we're just trying to focus on love and joy and bliss and empower people and educate people. But there are some beings that feel very threatened by that. And so whatever help we can get and call in, uh, we need to do it. So get on with it. Have a great evening. Good night. I, I...